Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the geodynamics lectures on the topic of heat conduction and heat production. This is our final lecture, lecture number six, and we're going to talk about how surface topography influences temperatures in the interior of the earth. So we have only one goal in this lecture and that is to look at a couple examples of variations of topography in two dimensions and how the earth's temperature field is affected by that topography. Now, going back to the previous lecture, we looked at, at how the heat production can influence things like the temperature field. We saw that for high heat production value or, or constant concentrations of heat producing elements, we have very high temperatures predicted. Um, and that depending on the temperatures we have at depth within the earth, that can change things like where um, rocks might begin to partially melt or the transition from brittle deformation to uh, ductile deformation and viscous flow within the earth. But another important thing to consider is how topography may influence the earth's surface. And so the question I have for you at this point is just to kind of get you thinking, and that is why might the topography at the earth's surface matter in terms of temperatures? So pause the video for a moment, think about that, and come back when you have some ideas. Okay, so let's just have your ideas in mind for the moment. The basic thought here is uh, if we look at the temperature that's predicted in the Earth beneath periodic topography, we can see something like this. So if our surface is going up and down like a sine wave, we could look at how temperature varies beneath that sine wave. And so typically what we've been doing at this point is we assume at a constant elevation y equals zero, we know a constant temperature t equals t zero. But we could also consider the fact that as we go up into the atmosphere, temperatures tend to decrease, and typically it's about six or seven degrees uh, cooler per kilometer you go up uh, into the atmosphere, at least within the first, you know, five or seven um, kilometers above the surface. Now, this suggests already that we should see variations in the temperature at the surface of the Earth in mountainous areas because, of course, we have uh, significant elevation ranges. And so this is something that we can incorporate in a um, calculation of temperatures. Now, the other thing that's important here, and it's a clear difference from our previous cases, is that this is now a two-dimensional problem. Previously, we've calculated temperature with depth. Now we have to look at temperature with depth, but also as a function of where we are relative to the elevation of the Earth's surface. So we can do this now um, by calculating our temperatures. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll just assume that the temperature or the, the elevation of the surface, we're not going to vary, but we'll just compensate for the variations in temperature by using a little kind of a scaling factor delta t. So what that allows us to do is have constant elevations here, but we'll have the temperature vary as if there was some topography um, present. So our equation then gets a little bit more complicated. This is a two-dimensional equation, and it's uh, I'm not going to go through the whole derivation, but you'll see some familiar terms here. So now we have temperature as a function of x and y, so along the surface distance and depth. We have T naught, our surface temperature, QM, which is our heat flux at the base of the crust, and then here's our thermal conductivity. Now we've got a heat production term in here, which is rho H naught, and then HR squared divided by K. HR in this case is the E folding depth, so this is the depth at which the heat producing element concentration decreases by 1 over E. That's multiplied by 1 minus e to the minus y over that e folding depth. Plus, here's our delta t term times cosine of 2 pi x over lambda e to the minus 2 pi y over lambda. And lambda is going to be the wavelength of the topography in this case. So um, that's going to be the length of a complete wave here in the surface topography. The delta t term, that's the term that compensates for the fact that there would be variations in the elevation of the Earth's surface, but we're going to assume it's flat and just vary temperature to simulate that effect. 
Uh, it contains the beta, which is the lapse rate, the change in temperature with elevation in the atmosphere. There's the basal heat flux, the uh, temperature flux at the base of the crust, QM, divided by kappa, and then rho H naught, there's E folding depth, K, and then that's multiplied by H naught, which is the relief for the elevation. Um, here you can see it clearly illustrated as the sort of half of the, uh, the relief or the amplitude of that sine wave. So there's everything kind of spelled out mathematically. Here is what the temperatures would look like if we did a calculation like this in two dimensions. So here I've assumed a whole bunch of different numbers. I've used a heat production of two and a half uh, microwatts per cubic meter, E folding depth of 10 kilometers, heat um, thermal conductivity of 2.75 watts per meter per Kelvin, 20 milliwatt per square meter heat flux at the base of the crust, four kilometer um, amplitude for the waves, and then six and a half degrees per kilometer for the lapse rate. The question for you is, um, what is the wavelength that I've used here? Lambda is question marks here, so what is the wavelength? So I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video and think about that for a second and come back when you've got an idea about the wavelength. Okay, uh, so what'd you come up with? Hopefully you see it's something like 20 kilometers. So if you look at the distance between this peak in temperature and that peak in temperature, it's about 20 kilometers depth. And so that is the value of lambda that you should have hopefully come up with. So now we can look at this temperature field and we can see some things. First off, we have temperatures varying at the surface and as a result of that, you can see there is this waviness in the temperatures at depth. You can see that the temperatures are actually varying at you know, five or uh, even you know, maybe 10 kilometers depth as a result of the variations in temperature at the surface that come from this periodic topography. So you can see it pretty clearly if you look at the about five kilometers depth that there's a little bit of a wave here. You can also see that as you go deeper down, this amplitude of the, the perturbation, the amplitude of the waviness in the um, temperature lines here decreases. So their amplitude gets smaller and smaller as you go to greater depth. Each one of these lines, um, in case it's not totally clear at this point, are lines of constant temperature and it's about, I think, a 20 um, 25 degree contour interval. So each one of these lines would be 25 degrees higher temperature. And so you can see here that by the time you get to 15 kilometers depth, the lines are basically horizontal. So that effect of the topography only applies in the upper part of the crust in this case. Here's another example, and this is just to illustrate a point. Everything here is the same as what we had in the previous case, except for the wavelength has changed. So um, why don't you pause the video again and calculate what you think the wavelength is for this example. All right, hopefully you can see that we have about one complete wavelength from here to here, and that's 50 kilometers. So the wavelength here is 50 kilometers. It's uh, two and a half times what it was previously. And in this case, you can see a couple interesting things. First off, the magnitude of the size of these perturbations remains much larger as you go down to depth. So previously we had looked at 15 kilometers as a depth where the line of constant temperature, the isotherm, was no longer perturbed by the topography. But here it's not very strongly modified, but you can still see that that's not a straight line at 15 kilometers depth. You could even see maybe down 20 or even 25 kilometers depth that there's still some very low amplitude variation in the elevation of the isotherm lines. So you can see here what's an interesting feature, and that is that the longer wavelength topography has a more of a deeper influence in terms of how it affects temperatures within, within the Earth. So the longer the wavelength, 
the deeper the influence of the topography. Now, if you're wondering why topography is important, obviously we've seen that it can influence the geometry of temperatures beneath the topography. Um, and that's particularly true when the relief gets big and when the wavelength gets big. We didn't really look at examples of different relief, but when the wavelength gets longer, that perturbation of the isotherms by the topography can go to quite a significant depth. And that's something that we saw in the two examples we considered. Now, if you're working with any kind of data in the real world that depend on the temperature structure, of course, then um, particularly if you're working in mountainous settings, you have to take into account the fact that the elevation of the surface is going to be quite variable and that the temperatures in the shallow part of the crust will then be strongly affected by variations in surface elevation. So if you're doing, dealing with things like low temperature thermal chronometer data, where you're sensitive to temperatures of 50 to maybe 150 degrees Celsius, those are temperatures that are going to potentially be strongly influenced by, uh, by topography. Okay, so that's it for heat production and heat conduction. This is the last quiz on this topic before we move on to advection of heat in the next set of lectures.